Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Cosmos cardigan. First of all, I just want to apologize for my voice. I do have a bit of a head cold today, but I wanted to get this video out so everyone who wants to make this cardigan over the holidays has the opportunity. This pattern uses Red Heart Huga Charm yarn, four balls for the Mrs. size, six balls for the plus size. You'll also need a US J hook. This one is by Furls. And I also recommend using stitch markers. These are by Clover. And of course, you'll need a yarn needle and some scissors. Let's go ahead and take a look at the finished sweater. Here you can see some pictures we took of the finished Cosmos cardigan. It's got a great fit, it's very cozy, and it's wonderfully warm. And here you can see it on the table in front of me. Now, it's a little bit big for the table right here, so I'm going to move it around a little bit. But you can see it's got a shawl style collar. It's just worked back and forth in rows across the front opening like so. And the pieces, is made in three pieces, two front pieces and one back piece that are seamed up the sides. A ribbed hem is added before that shawl collar I showed you. And then we add the sleeves after the rest of the sweater is put together. So the, sle the sleeves are crocheted right into the arm openings and then we work on down to a ribbed cuff to match that bottom hem. So that is a quick overview. Now let's take a look at the stitches used in making the Cosmos cardigan. Now, before you begin making your Cosmos cardigan, please go to the link in the description. There you will find both the right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as a link out to the written pattern. And you'll need that for this pattern because it does come in two sizes and there are some different stitch counts depending on which size you make. For this video, I'm going to demonstrate the basic stitches and how it all comes together. But with the written pattern, you can make it in whichever size you need. So for row one of the back piece, which is the first piece that we make of this sweater, you're going to foundation double crochet 91 if it is the Mrs. size and 133 for the plus. I have a separate tutorial for foundation double crochet that is linked out at the link in the description and it's here on the YouTube channel. So if you're not familiar with how to make foundation double crochets, you'll want to look that up. But it's a great way to start anything where you want just a little bit of stretch in that first row. Now if you really don't like using foundation double crochets, you can instead make a chain and then double crochet across it as long as you end up with the same number of finished double crochets at the end of that row as called for in the pattern, you'll be all set. So after you've made your first round of foundation double crochets, we'll turn and work back and in that row for the second row and every row pretty much after that of this pattern, we'll be using a special stitch called extended half double crochets worked in the front loop only. So I will be back to show you that here as soon as I've got a few more of these stitches made. Now, rows two through 30 or 32, depending on the size of your back piece, are all going to be the same and they're all going to be worked like this. You turn at the end of the previous row and then the first stitch is going to be a chainless starting double crochet. And again, this is something I have a separate tutorial for, but I will demonstrate it for you here now. You want to pull your loop up to about the height of a double crochet, put your finger over that loop, wind the loop around your hook, go into that first stitch under both loops, yarn over, pull up a loop. Notice that my finger is maintaining tension on top of that loop on my hook. Yarn over, pull through and behind that loop that was sort of wound around the hook. Then yarn over and pull through both of those loops, finally releasing that tension. And that is a chainless starting double crochet. Again, I do have a separate tutorial for that on the channel. Now, the rest of the row across until that very last stitch is going to be front loop only, extended half double crochets. So let me demonstrate that for you now. First of all, front loop only, if you're not familiar, is always the loop of the top V of the stitch that is closest to you as the crocheter. That's the front loop. That one back there is the back loop. It doesn't matter which way you're going. It's always relative to you, the crocheter. So to make a front loop only extended half double crochet, we'll yarn over, go under that front loop only of the next stitch, yarn over, pull up our loop, 
yarn over, pull through just one loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three. Let's do that again, and we'll break it down into its parts. I yarn over, go under that front loop, yarn over and pull up a loop. This is the part that makes it extended. We yarn over and pull through just one loop. The part that makes it half double crochet, we yarn over and pull through all three. So that's what we would just do on across our row all the way until there's just one stitch left. And then in that very last stitch, we just work a double crochet. So again, follow the written pattern. If you are making the misses size, it would be for 30 rows. For the plus size, it would be for 32. But you're just going to keep repeating row two until we're ready to do something different for row 31 or 33 where we make some notches for our armholes. So I will meet you back when we're ready to make those. All right, so I'm going to pretend that this piece is my back piece and it is ready for row 31 or 33, again, depending on which size you're making. The first thing I'm going to do is turn to work back the other direction and then slip stitch in the first five or eight stitches, again, depending on size. So when I make these stitches, I want to be able to work into them again later. So pull up your loop and before you pull it through that first loop on the hoop, on the hook, excuse me, go ahead and sort of wiggle your hook back and forth a little bit so that you make sure that that slip stitch doesn't become too tight. You don't want to add a bunch of tension to your working yarn either as that would tighten it up quite a bit. So we're just going to loosely slip stitch in these first, again, it's either five stitches if you're making the plus size or eight stitches if you are making or excuse me, five stitches if you're making the minuses size and eight stitches if you're making the plus. Sorry, trying to count and speak numbers at the same time doesn't always work for me. There we go, all right. So I've made a slip stitch in the first five stitches and then I am going to make another chainless starting double crochet in that same stitch as the last slip stitch. So I'll go ahead and pull my loop, loop up on my hook here, wind it around, go right back into that same stitch pull up my loop and finish that chainless starting double crochet like so. There we go. Then I can continue to work front loop only, extended half double crochets across, but I want to stop when there are five or eight, again, depending on size, stitches left before the end. So I'm just going to make a few more front loop only, extended half double crochets here and I will see you when I've got five, or again, we'll have to use our imaginations here, eight stitches left on this row. Okay, now I've got five stitches left, which would be eight if it was a plus size, so I'll go ahead and yarn over, and this time I'm just going to double crochet under both loops. So at the end of row 31, or again, 33, if this is the plus size, then you should have 83 or 119 stitches, meaning the double crochets here, not counting those while well, the slip stitches at the beginning and the skipped stitches there at the end. This creates a little notch that's going to go under the arms of our armholes. And so now we've worked up to the body, up to the base of the armhole, and we're going to add a few more rows working evenly, just as we did down here, but only this wide until we get up where we're ready to add a little notch for our neck hole. So at this point, you just continue basically repeating row two, just as we were before. You turn, pull up, and work back across chainless starting double crochet, front loop only extended half double crochet, double crochet in the last until we've got a few more rows and then I'll show you how to work that last row of the back piece. All right, so after you've made more rows, you'll be ready for what's either row 45 or 49, again, depending on size. This row is worked in two parts to create a neck opening in the middle. So what we're going to do is make the first half here before our neck opening, just as we did before. Pull up your loop, make your chainless starting double crochet. There we go. And then front loop only, extended half double crochet in a certain number of stitches depending on size. If you're making the misses size, it would be the next 29 stitches. And if you're making the plus size, it would be the next 45 stitches. So then counting the chainless starting double crochet, you would have either 30 or 46 stitches across. For my little swatch here, I just want to have a total of six. 
So let me see what I've got here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, one more. And again, this is just for the little sample size here. There we go. So after you've made either 30 or 46 stitches for the first half of your neckline, what we want to do is go ahead and break the yarn. I always recommend leaving at least six inches uh, so that you can weave it in. But if you'd like to, you can actually leave a longer tail um, and use this to help seam up your shoulder seam later. But that is optional and up to you. So just go ahead and pull that through to finish off. Get my end pulled out with a little bit more yarn here. And then after that, you are going to skip the next either 23 or 27 stitches, again, depending on size. So for my little swatch here, I'm not going to skip, obviously, nearly so many. I'm just going to skip a few here. I think I'll skip six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So after you have skipped, again, for your full size sweater, either 23 or 27 stitches, we're going to join to the next stitch with a front loop only extended half double crochet. And that sounds like a lot, and I'm going to walk you right through it. So let me put that down. I just want to make sure I can find that stitch again. And I'm going to pick up the end of my yarn. There we go. I'm going to start with a slip knot on the hook, like so. And then I'm going to hold on to that tail just to help secure it and stabilize that loop on my hook with these fingers here. Then I am going to yarn over once. So I've got two loops on my hook. Then I'm going to go under the front loop only of that stitch. So it helps if you want to use a stitch marker so you can mark, mark that out so you don't have to sit here and count them again. I only have six to do, so it'll be pretty easy for me here. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's my seventh stitch. So again, I'm just going to go under the front loop only, just as we were doing before. And I want to give a little tug here. I want to keep my loops pretty close together and next to each other right here. I'm going to yarn over, pull up one loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop, then yarn over and pull through all three loops that are on the hook. And notice how I'm hol holding those loops here with my other hand. Any stability you can give to that stitch while you're making it, the better. There we go. And that is a standing front loop only extended half double crochet. Then we can extended half double crochet in each stitch after that until we get to that very last one where we'll work a regular double crochet. Just as we finished all the rows previous. So by putting that little notch right there in the middle of our neck, it will help the shoulder seams of our sweater move forward towards the top of our shoulders more and not be set back, creating a longer back than front for our sweater. So that's why that's there. So then I've just worked a double crochet there right in that final stitch, and then I can break my yarn, and that is a tiny little version of our back piece. Then we can begin our first front piece. Now for the first front piece, it'll be the left front if you're right-handed, or the right front if you're left-handed. Regardless, it's going to start out with front uh, foundation double crochets for either 34 or 53 stitches, or however you want to get those double crochets made, and then we work just as before, front loop only extended half double crochet for 30 or 32 rows. So that will be the same height. If I pull back up my little back piece here, the same height before that notch, because now we're ready to make that row 31 or 33 again, so that we can match up those parts of our sweater. So for the left front piece for right-handed people, right front for left-handed, for row 31, it's going to be basically just like the start of row 31 for the back, where we slip stitch in the first five stitches here. One, two, three, four, five. Then chainless starting double crochet in that same stitch as the last slip stitch. There we go. like so, and then simply front loop only, extended, half double crochet until the last stitch of this row and double crochet in that one. We don't have to put another notch on the other side of this one because it's a cardigan, so those fronts will be straight. You'll also note that the front pieces are less than half the width of the back because the collar that we add adds quite a bit of width afterwards. 
so. Just like so, we've made our row 31 or 33 of our first front piece. So I would just work that on up to the height here. You can see if I lay it over here, that gets worked to the same height, same number of rows as that piece right there. You'll notice too, that should be the same width right there. And all those pieces should be ready to match up. So go ahead and make a few more rows to finish your left front piece. And then I'll walk you through the right front piece, left one for lefties. Now the last piece you need to make before the assembly is the right front piece for right-handed and left front for left-handed crocheters. And this is sort of like making the second half of what we did for our back piece. We work up again to row 31 or 33 and then we work across and just don't work in those last four or again eight stitches. Then work on up to the same height and you'll be all set. Then we're ready for the assembly instructions. All right, now you can see all three pieces laid out ready to assemble. Here's the back and here are the fronts. I've made sure that the right side of each is facing and the way you can tell that is because if you'll notice the texture that we make with the front loop only extended half double crochets, it creates these lines. And when I look at the wrong side, there's no line after that first row one. It doesn't show up on that side, it just shows up on the right side. So that's how I can always tell which one's the right side. And you can see I've got my notches lined up here on my back and my fronts. And we're going to sew these together right here and then these together right here and then we'll fold it and this will get sewn to this portion and this will get sewn to this portion and you could probably use any seaming method I like to use mattress stitch seaming so let me get my yarn needle out and I'll demo that for you now okay so here you can see I've used stitch markers to hold the pieces together from what would be row 1 to row 30 or 32, which is just the part I want to seam. This will help me make sure that these lines all line up and that each row is sewn together in order and so that I don't end up getting them slightly offset. So to begin the mattress stitch, I like to start at the bottom and I'm going to come from the back to the front on one side of the fabric, doesn't matter which one, whatever you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and get this stitch marker out of the way here. There we go. Then I come over to the other side of the fabric and in the same spot or as close to it as I can get, I insert my needle from the back to the front again and pull through. Now at this point, I've got my tail for weaving in later and I want to make sure not to pull that too far. So I'll just hold on to that a little bit while I pull these closer together. Then find the next spot on the first side and come from the back to the front again and pull that through. And then lining them up, find the same spot on the other side. Or again, as close to it as you can get. I want to make sure not to put a knot in it there. There we go. And pull that on through. And you just keep moving back and forth from one side to the other, back to front, pulling it through, and it will create a pretty darn invisible seam. Again, if you prefer, you can whip stitch it, but you just want to make sure not to go past that row. We want to leave all this open for our arms, our armholes and sleeves to be added later. After you've added that, and then of course the other front piece on this side, like I said, you fold it over and see how that matches up. Got all sort of all my ends here. But you can see our top shoulder seams then get sewn just from here to here. And then we're ready to add our collar, our hem actually first, then our collar and then our sleeves. So I'm going to seam up our little guy here and I will see you here in a few minutes. All right, now at this point you should have sort of a, well, a lot bigger, but a little vest like this. So next we're going to add the bottom ribbed hem. So from the right side of the sweater, the outside, I can tell because I've got that little stripe above row one there, I'm going to join to the first stitch at the bottom hem. So if I lay the sweater out flat like this, my first stitch would be right over here. So I come over here and I am going to join to th this stitch and then chain nine. So I can just go ahead and join with a regular slip stitch. So I'm gonna find those top two loops. There we are. And of course that's actually the bottom of the chain or the bottom of our foundation double crochet, depending on what stitch you made. So I'm just going to pull my yarn through there, drop that end and I like to make a little slip stitch and then give that end a tug and pull it down real tight. 
And then I don't count that as any of my chains. It's just a little joining stitch there. Then, like I said, I'm going to start by chaining nine. One, two, <laughs> there we go. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then I am going to work a back loop only single crochet in the chains back down towards the sweater, skipping the one shape closest to the hook. So I skip that one, come to this next one, and in the back loop only, I work a single crochet. And remember when we talked about front loop only, back loop only, in this case, the back loop only is always the one furthest away from you. So we just work single crochets, eight of them. Since we need, made nine chains and we skipped that first one, we'll work eight single crochets on our way back down this chain. And what we're doing here is creating a rib look hem, hem edging bottom to our sweater that I just think looks really nice. It takes a little bit of time to do this sort of finish, but it's a lot quicker than say a slip stitch uh, binding or a slip stitch rib that's very popular. It has a similar look, but it should go a lot faster. So let's come back up here and see how many we've made. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. So now what I want to do is single crochet two together in the next two row one stitches. So not the one I've joined to right there. I'm going to come over to the second one and pull up a loop. And then the third one and pull up a loop. See our little single crochets are flapping around back there. That's all right. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. And I like to give this stitch a little tug. Make sure it's nice and tight, that single crochet two together. Then we're ready for row two. Turn to go back the other way. We're going to skip that single crochet two together we just made, and we're not going to chain. We're just going to go right into that first, or the last rather, single crochet, back loop only, and single crochet there. And we're going to do that on across. So we'll have eight single crochets at the end of this row. Again, just working into the back loop only of our little rib here. So then I should be just about there. Just a couple more. It's always a good idea to count your stitches when you're making these. It's very easy to miss one of these little guys and end up with a wonky bit of ribbing. So you only have to count to eight each time, so it's not too bad. There we go. That should be the last one. So let me give them a count. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. You'll notice that last one likes to try and hide behind there. That's what I'm talking about, especially when you come back this direction to make sure you don't miss that one. So here we are at the end of that row. So that was our, let's see, that would have been a row two repeat. So then we chain one to begin row three. Come back the other direction again, back loop only, single crochet. One, there we go. Two, three. It's a little bit fiddly, but again, I just love the way this looks. And it's one of my favorite techniques I've been using this basic stitch idea to make cuffs for many years now on Moogly Patterns, and it's been a little while since I've used it, so I'm happy to revisit it again. It just gives such a great look. Let's see here. We should have just two more left. And this is what I was talking about. That last one likes to hide. So let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. It's right down here. Sort of dig your hook in there and pull up that back loop and make that last single crochet, like so. Then we're back down here, ready to work into the bottom of row one again. So we go to the next stitch, pull up a loop, stitch after that, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two for a single crochet, two together. And then I say I like to tighten that stitch up a little bit. And then we're ready to begin again, just working back and forth, back and forth. And we'll do that all the way across the bottom hem of our sweater here until we get to the other side. And then we can finish it off and then we'll be ready to go to the collar instructions. So I'll see you when we're ready to make the collar.
okay, for the sake of time, I didn't make this whole ribbed hem. I just went ahead and added it and then made a couple more rows here as if I had finished it off and worked all the way across. So use your imagination with me. We have worked our final row, which is a row to repeat for our bottom ribbed hem, and we're ready to begin the collar. Okay, so to begin the collar, we don't have to break our yarn after making our last bottom ribbed hem row. We should have finished on the inside of the sweater, so we can turn and chain one, or chain one and turn, whichever you prefer, to work up this way, and at this point, we can continue working along the right side front opening. So after we chain one, we're just going to single crochet evenly up that last row of ribbing, then up those front rows of that first side, across the back, and then down again, and down across and finish at that other corner. So single crocheting evenly just means whenever you've got a stitch like this, you can just work into, work one single crochet in each of those, and then when you're working into the sides of the rows, just work evenly to maintain your tension. Stitch count here does not matter at all. So if you need to add a stitch or take away a stitch to get it to lay nice and flat, whatever works for you. I will see you after we have finished row one of our collar. Okay, so after you've single crocheted from one side all the way around the front opening and down across the ribbed hem on the other side, then you're ready to make rounds, to, or excuse me, rows, 2 through 12 or 14 for plus, which are all exactly the same. We chain one, work back the other direction of course, and front loop only half double crochet across. So it's a little simpler, we yarn over, we go under the front loop only, pull up a loop, and pull through all three. And that's just it for the shawl collar there. We're just gonna make 12 to 14 rows or more. If you wanted to make a really big shawl collar or a really small shawl collar, or a whole different kind of collar, this is where you can really make this cardigan pattern your own. Add some more length, or width, I guess I would say, or uh, take some away, or you could even add a scalloped edging or something fancier if you like. I like just the simplicity of the front loop only half double crochet, but you can do whatever works for you. So you would just work all the way around back and forth in rows, turn at the end, come back around, front loop only, half double crochet for another 12, like I say, a total of 12 to 14 rows for the collar, whichever you prefer. When you've worked back and forth that many times, you'll end on a wrong side row like I am here. There we go, I think. Am I? Yes, <laughs> you should end on a wrong side row since we worked, worked row one from the right side. So after you've worked across here, you'll be ready to add the final edging, which is just very simply turn and then single crochet. Let's see, you would end up here, getting all myself turned around here. You'll end up on this end, so then you turn so you're back on the right side, chain one and single crochet all the way around that front opening again, and then chain two and single crochet across the bottom of the shawl collar. But when you get to the ribbing, just work a slip stitch in that first row of the ribbing, and or the first row of ribbing that you'd come to. Break your yarn and then jump to the other end of the ribbing. Join with a slip stitch there, single crochet across the sides of the collar rows again, and then you can join to that other end of the collar. And that just adds a final round of single crochet that finishes it off. So the only thing left to handle after that are the sleeves. Now the sleeve instructions are the same for both arms. What you want to do is come to an armhole and see those little notches that we had cut out on our back and our front pieces and find the first one in the direction that you're working. So let me explain that here. Since I'm right-handed, if I count this way, for me, I'm going right-handed from right to left. I want to find the fifth stitch. One, two, three, four, five. So is your one, two, three. There's a fourth one there, and there's the five. So that's, since this is the, let's see, this would be the right arm. It would be the first stitch on the back piece there. If I come over here to the left arm, it would be the first stitch on the front piece, just because I'm working in that direction because... That's the direction I work. If you're watching the left-handed version, of course, I'm pointing the other direction, and for you it looks like a different one, but it's just that first one basically in the middle of the bottom of the arm opening is where you want to go ahead and join. So you join to that first stitch there, that fifth or eighth stitch at the bottom of the arm opening, and then chain one and single crochet evenly around that opening. So let's go ahead and do that row together here. I'm going to pull up my end of yarn here, and I'm just going to, again, find that stitch. I can even count back here, one, two, three, four. I know it's that first one right there. 
There we are. Pull up my loop. And go ahead and pull that down again so it's a nice tight join. Then I'll make my chain one and then just single crochet around. So I'm going to single crochet in that stitch I joined to and then the next two stitches here. And then I do do something just a little bit different. And this is where we want to make sure too that we've worked those slip stitches loosely because when it comes time to work back into those slip stitches, that's where you're doing that. So I wanted to point this out too. Here I've got that last um, notch stitch, so to speak, before I have to start working to the sides of the rows here. And here I want to work a single crochet two together. I'm gonna go into that one and pull up a loop here and then go into the side of this row here wherever I normally would to start working in the side of that row there. There we go. Pull up my loop and then yarn over and pull through all three. And that just creates a nice little curve there. Then I'll continue single crocheting evenly around the armhole until I get over here. And then when I make that last stitch here in this side and the first stitch down here in that those unworked stitches down here, that will be a single crochet two together as well. So that by the time I've worked all the way around, for the misses size, you'd want to have a total of 66 stitches, and for the plus size, you'll want to have a total of 80. After that, we just have a few more identical rows, all worked the same, and then the cuff, and we'll be done with our sleeves. Okay, so after I've single crocheted all the way around that arm opening, I am ready to go ahead and join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet. Then I'm ready to begin row two, or rather round two, of our sleeve, which is always gonna be the same. Now, one thing about this, it is turned rounds. So we're going to turn, and the even numbered rows are going to be worked from the inside of the sleeve. So we just go ahead and join and turn. And at this point, it can be really helpful too to use a stitch marker. Let me grab one here. And what you want to use that for actually, before you make your slip stitch, let me pull that back out, is go ahead and mark the last stitch of each round, get my hook loop up there a little before, before I lose that stitch. Let me grab another stitch marker and also the first stitch of each round. And this will help you maintain your stitch count as you work the next uh, 30 or so rows. I guess it would be not quite 30, yeah, about 30, 28 to 30 rows, depending on size. And this will just help you maintain and not accidentally end up working into the slip stitch. When you work in turned rounds like this, that's really easy to accidentally do. So again, I'll just go ahead and join to that first stitch. And then I'm going to turn to work from the inside. I am going to chain two, which does not count as my first stitch. And then I am going to front loop only, extended half double crochet, the same stitch we've been doing around, until two stitches remain. So I want to yarn over and make sure, and this is where it gets tricky because normally I might wanna work in there, but that's my slip stitch. I wanna work into my first stitch. So it's a good thing I have that marker there. Go under that front loop only, make our extended half double crochet, and then at this point, I'll move this stitch marker from this st stitch on up to this one. This is the new first stitch of this round. Then, like I said, I will just continue to front loop only, extended half double crochet around until there are just two stitches of this row left, so or round rather, and that's where I'll see you next. Okay, so here you can see I just have two stitches left. I've got that last stitch marked with my stitch marker, so I always know I'm in the right spot. Now in these two stitches, I'm going to work a front loop only, double crochet, two together. So I just go into that front loop again, pull up my loop, yarn over, pull through two, two loops left on the hook, I yarn over again, go into the front loop only of that last marked stitch, pull up my loop, pull through two, then yarn over and pull through all three. And that is my new last stitch, so I'll move that stitch marker on up into the top of this one, like so. There we go. And then I can join right to the top of that marked stitch, handy dandy, right there waiting for me, like so. So that is how you make round two, and then you turn and go back the other direction and do the exact same thing with a double crochet two together over the last two stitches for rounds 27 through 29, depending on which size you're making. So the stitch count will actually decrease by one every round. So at the end of round 27 or 29, depending on which length you're going for, you should have either 40 or 52 stitches left. Now, if you've got particularly long arms or short arms, this is a great chance for you to alter that length a little bit to make sure it suits you. 
Now, for round 28 or 30, when you've gotten all the length, we want to bring it in a little bit before we add our cuff. So again, it's just going to depend on which, um, which size you're making, which set of instructions you follow. There are two different numbers for this one, but it's basically, and this one's actually worked from the inside, but for the sake of time here, I'm just gonna go ahead and pretend we're ready for it. You would begin with a chain two, and then front loop only, extended half double crochet in either the first two stitches, if you are making the misses size, size, or the first three stitches, if you are making the plus size. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pretend I'm making the misses size here. So I have half, uh, front loop only, extended half double crocheted in the first two, then I'm going to front loop only, double crochet two together in the next two. So there's one half of it, and the second half, and then a front loop only, double crochet two together. And that's our repeat. We would just go ahead and front loop only, uh, extended half double crochet either two or three, then a decrease. Two or three, then a decrease all the way around. And if you are making the misses size, that works out perfectly. In the plus size, you would have two stitches left there at the end that you would work a front loop only extended half double crochet into. So at the end of round 28, if you're making the misses size, you should have 30 stitches. At the end of round 30, if you're making the plus size, you should have 42. Then we just work a simple round of single crochet evenly and then make another ribbed cuff that matches our bottom one. Same thing, chain nine, work back and forth all the way around. And I've included written instructions too on how to go ahead and just sew the two ends of that cuff together. It's very simple. You end up just coming back around so you can just go ahead and use your yarn needle and cinch those last two rows together. Well, the other, rather I should say the first row and the last row of each cuff. So you just repeat that then for the other sleeve and then you are all set with your Cosmos cardigan. Okay, and here on the finished cardigan, let me pull up this sleeve here and you can see we've got our little decrease round right here, then a round of single crochet and then like I say, we've got our ribbed cuff instructions just the same as they were except we end up sewing two ends of it together. Now by working turned rows or round or joined rows, what is it, joined rounds, you know, joined rows or turned rounds. I always get those mixed up. I always have to think it through. Anyway, by doing that, we maintain in the sleeves the same stitch pattern that we got by working in rows for the body. And it also keeps that seam with the decreases here. Let me find it on the bottom of the sleeve there. It keeps it nice and straight and lined up. And by decreasing, we get a really nice tapered sleeve without too much bulk. Like I say, and then we've got this great cuff on the end. So you can make this sweater with Red Heart Huga Charm and the free pattern on mooglyblog.com. Again, please go to the link in the description. There you'll find both tutorials as well as a link to the written pattern and all of the supplies you need and everything I've shown you here today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you helped. It. I hope this video helps you make your own sweater. I hope my voice is back to normal next time. Again, I apologize for that. But thank you again for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm.